Okay. Thank you very much to the organizer for the opportunity to speak here and to all of you for listening. This talk is based on a paper that will appear soon. And in short, I will present the problem of conicalizing weighted limits in a rich setting and show you an essential solution in the Katernitz case, which will produce the two concepts that appear in the title in a simultaneously. So maybe this will convince you that there is quite a strong bond between the two. And at this point, we will study the Grothendieck construction, actually an extended version of it, from a more abstract point of view, using the Lux normal two limits. And in particular, we will establish a pointwise scan extension result. And so let's first recall that an ordinary cone on some f with vertex u can be written in a fancy way as a natural transformation from the constant at u to f, or equivalently as one from the constant at one, which makes things more clear. And the problem in, in the reached setting is that one is not sensitive enough in the sense that the morphisms from one to some object don't fully capture that object anymore. For example, if you take a category, then the functors from one will only pick the objects of the category. And if you want to capture the morphisms, well, then you need to consider functors from two, maybe. And this brings to the definition of a weighted limit, where on the right below, we have this upgraded version of cones that we now call cylinders. But we do pay attention to when W is delta one. In that case, we call the limit conical. And now the question is, uh, it is true that in the certain reached case, every weighted limit is conicalizable. But the question is, under which other enrichment phases is, is this true? And there is a very important example that justifies the need of weighted limits, which is that we really want to say that every copper ship is a colimit of representables. And this can be achieved as a co-limit of the unit embedding weighted by the copper ship itself. And there is actually a nice lemma of continuity of a limit in the weight that tells us that if we are able to conicalize, essentially conicalize the special co-limits of representables above in a nice way, then we are also able to conicalize every weighted limit at that point. Because if we manage to have on the left hand side below any weighted limit with s equal to delta one, then we would find on the right a conical limit. And it's true that we have another weight, but maybe that can simplify by unit dilemma if that diagram is similar enough to the unit embedding. So let's consider the cut and reach the case. And and those special colimits of representables and try to uh, encode a, a co-cylinder phi in terms of a possibly relaxed cocoon phi tilde. And a, a strict cocoon would never make it because now in dimension two, phi will also have an assignment of morphisms. But maybe bending the rules a bit and admitting two cells inside the cocoons, we will manage to to encode everything of phi here. And as I was saying before, as we want to then apply the lemma of continuity in the weight to conclude the conicalization of every weighted limit, we search for a diagram that is the unit embedding precomposed with something that up to now is just a symbol, but we're going to determine what it needs to be. And it will be uh, an extended version of the Grothendieck construction. And so for every A in A and every X in W of A, phi is giving us a morphism from unit of A to U. And we want to build a cocoon with exactly these morphisms. So we need the objects of our two categories that we are constructing to parameterize all of these. And so we can call those objects A comma X and they need to get projected down to A. And if we admit two cells inside phi tilde, maybe asking it to be at least a lux natural transformations, we can now also encode the assignment of morphisms of phi. As long as we have 
those uh, morphisms on the left for every A and for every alpha in W of A homomorphism that we can call identity comma alpha to keep the notation consistent with having the projection to be the projection of the first component. And now we see, however, that phi tilde cannot be too lax either because it needs to encode the strict naturality of phi somehow. And we can do so using other structure to cells but then we need another kind of morphism in order to category for every morphism f from a to a prime and every x in w of a that we can think of as above a. And these morphisms are like liftings of f to x. And then we, these two kinds of morphisms are the only one that we need, but we have to close them under composition. And there is a swapping property that we need to ask in order to have then the naturality of phi on morphies. But after this, we, we can say that every finite composition is reduced to one of this kind. And then we take these morphisms here to be the morphism of our two category, and they will compose by the swapping property and the natural composition of morphisms of the same kind. And then we also want to encode the two naturality of phi. So for every two cell delta and every x, we have this equality. And then we see that we need a two cell delta to the x that lands into g to the x because we want the two cell on the right square to be the identity. And then it needs to get projected down to delta as we want on the rightmost two cell unit of delta. And then the domain needs to be the right thing. And it's natural to ask again an analogous uh, swapping property. And at this point, every horizontal composition is of two cells is reduced to a whiskering identity beta delta to the x. And so we take these ones as two cells and we see that it's just a property now for a two cell delta to elevate to a two cell that runs into G beta. And we can give some names to what we have produced. We call the two category together with its projection, the two set rich growth in the construction of W, tell you later why. And this is a, an extended version of the usual growth in the construction to allow A to be a two category, uh, but it's also a, a generalization of the construction of the category of elements as well. And then we call a lax normal natural transformation, a lax one, such that the structure to cells on every f to the x is the identity. And here we are including as a piece of structure some marking uh, that sees the domain as a growth in the construction there. So in some sense, we are taking the two category and giving the a way of splitting it into a vertical and horizontal part and ask the laxness to only be in the vertical part. And from this, we can build the notion of lax normal conical to limit, taking the conical weight and using lax, natural, lax normal natural transformations. And from this, we immediately get also a notion for co-limits, but it comes out that if we start from a weight that is from a op to cut, there is a slightly more natural construction we can do and then take oplax normal colimits. And so we find this theorem that appears in street, but now with the new proof, more intuitive, that is that lax normal conical to limits are particular weighted ones, weighted by these slices that are nice to compare to, to the ones that uh, weight the lux conical to limits without normal, but those are two dimensional slices, while these ones are one dimension. And then we can extend the argument of before to a complete isomorphism that shows that we can essentially conicalize every special colimit of representables, and then from that, every weighted limit. And we can see this example to understand more what's going on here. Take again the colimits of representables that build every copy shift. 
And then the last normal cocoon that we get is this one that I think is showing that the growth in the construction is really born to make this thing work. And in particular, if we take A equals one, we obtain that one is lux normal conical dense in cut, in the sense that every category can be built as a lux normal conical colimit of one. And so the lux normal cocoon is given uh, on the components by taking the objects of that category and on the two cells inside by taking so we have given another way to capture a category, uh, other from considering functors from two to that category, we can just consider functors from one, but then also natural transformations between one and the category. And now we want to study the growth in construction from a more abstract point of view. And in dimension one, we have an analog of this square that presents the growth in the construction of the category of elements as a comma object. But the first thing we notice is that the best we can have is a lux normal natural transformation in this square. And so we are forced to go out of the strict two cut. And in order to consider lux natural transformation as well, and we obtain a lux free category to cut lux. That means a category enriched over the one category of two categories and lux functors. And here the interchange rule will be lux in the sense that if we have alpha and beta taking the structure to cells of beta on the components of alpha will give us a free cell between the two different evaluations of that horizontal composition. And a way to capture this is by considering what I call a two set enrichment after a nice discussion with Francesco Danino that is here. And the idea is to start from set and reaching over it, and this gives you cut. And at that point, you want to weakly enrich over cut, because otherwise we would enrich just on the underlying category of cut, losing information. And, and so uh, we can build this definition of lux comma in any lux free category. It's in dimension one, it asks the same thing as a comma, but in dimension two, it asks just to have a, a free set between the two pastings there. And we recover a unique two cell from V to W as long as we ask other than that it gets projected to the right to think also that the free cell associated to the lux interchange rule of doing nu and then lambda is precisely xi from we started from, and then also a three-dimensional property. And it is true that we can express in this way the two set enriched growth in construction with the lux comma, or equivalently with a pullback that uses this lux pointed version of cut. And this also offers us a way to ex canonically extend the, growth in, the two set enriched growth in construction to a two functor. And this slide is also interesting from an elementary topos point of view, because I think it's saying that this should be the canonic, the archetypal three-dimensional classification process, where on the right we have the inclusion of a verum into generalized truth values. And now the classification in dimension three is regulated by lux commas, while in dimension two by commas, and in dimension one just by pullbacks. And then what gets classified, and the answer is the split two set of vibrations with small fibers, where two set of vibrations are an extension of the usual grotenic of vibrations where we ask on the morphemes to have discrete vibrations. Remember before that it was just a property for a two cell delta to elevate to a two cell in the grotenic construction. And then it is also true in dimension one that that square presents F as the point where it's left an extension of delta one along the, growth in, along the construction of the category of elements. We wanted to achieve something like this. And there is a theorem in Berg that I think is saying that at least a weak can extension result is true there, which is the, the first line. 
And then we can use that isomorphisms together with having a lux comma, which is the line in the middle, to achieve uh, the two fully faithfulness of the two sudden rich protein construction and that we have then the two equivalents. And it's interesting to notice how it restricts down to pseudo and strict case. And in the third line, we find precisely what we have seen in the proof before of the conicalization in dimension two. And below we find that the cleavage preserving factor and the Cartesian ones have really a lot to do with lux transformations and the sigma ones that are the pseudo analog. And then I wanted to say that this kind of extension is pointwise as well, but we first needed a concept of a co-limit that wasn't, uh, there was no concept of co-limit in the two certain reached case. So I thought, what is a nice notion of co-limit that emerges naturally in two cat locks together with the growth in construction? And I said, well, I, maybe I could use the OPLAX normal two co-limits. Now, non necessary conical anymore. And I make it more explicit this piece of structure given by some marking to view the domain as a growth in construction. And now we can rephrase our theorem of conicalization in dimension two to say that in two cut locks, every trivially marked weighted two colimit is equivalently a marked trivially weighted two colimit. And so then I, I propose this definition of pointwise left can extension along a two set of vibration where I just took the the usual definition in the rich setting, which is just the right part, but I added there the marking that we naturally have if we are extending along a two set of vibration. And this works in the sense that I managed to prove that then F is also the pointwise left can kind of extension of delta one along the two set rich protein construction. And at this point, I wonder if this notion of uh, pointwise left can kind of extension was sensible somehow. And so I wanted to say at least that every pointwise can kind of extension is also a weak one. And this is classically based on the parametrized unit dilemma. So I needed to prove a generalization of the parametrized unit dilemma to involve these transformations into variables that are both Oplux normal in one and lux in the other, together with the compatibility that says that you can swap a structure to cells of different kinds. And so I proved this Oplux normal lux parameterized unit dilemma, where the alphas are these Oplux normal and lux together, and they correspond to morphies from one that are extraordinary lux. I think it's nice to notice that a fully lax parameterized unit lemma just couldn't work because we need some strictness in order to expand the datum of, on the identity to a complete transformation. And this shows like the minimum amount of strictness that you need. And it's that of Oplax normal natural transformation. And at this point, it was just a corollary that every point that is left can extension into cut lax is also a weak one. And Thank you for listening. Thank you, Luca, for the nice talk. So are there any questions? So, so if not, maybe I have one. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so what about uh, enriching on a different category with respect to set? So you have these two set enriched stuff and if you replace set by another yeah that, another that's category. a very interesting question i still don't know <laughs> but i think it would be probably the right context to consider uh, in order to have generalization of this kind of things so maybe other conicalization result of the weighted limits in in those settings so i think that cut is special because it's set cut and then we can build two set cut on it. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? 
So if not, let's thank Luca again. And we have five minutes break now. Bello, <laughs> 